What's up guys, my name is Javier and welcome back to Tool Craze. And boy are you guys in for a treat in today's episode as we're going to be going over the highly anticipated Milwaukee M18 Fuel 10 inch sliding miter saw. Yup, you guys heard right. This is an 18 volt 10 inch dual bevel sliding miter saw. And before this bad boy came out, plenty of other brands have come out with their own cordless battery powered miter saws. As let's see, Craftsman, Ryobi, Makita, Bosch, DeWalt, Metabo, and lately Rigid have come out with their own 18 volt cordless miter saws. I bet you Milwaukee fanboys were starting to get a little bit worried as to see when Milwaukee was coming out with their own cordless 18 volt miter saw. But as we can see here, I will say that it was worth the wait. That's because previous 18 volt miter saws were pretty much all 7 and a quarter inch models with the exception being Metabol's slightly larger 8 and a half inch miter saws. Now, there's nothing wrong with 7 and a quarter inch miter saws as they're very lightweight and very portable. But most of them have rather short horizontal and vertical cut capacities. And that's due to their smaller blade and power. So up until recently there wasn't anything cordless with the cut capacities of a full size miter saw. If you wanted a full size miter saw, then you'd have to go out and get a corded 10 inch or a 12 inch miter saw or one of DeWalt's new Flexful 120 volt cordless miter saws. The new DeWalt Flexful 120 volt cordless miter saws do offer full size 12 inch blades but then you have to go out of your way and purchase new flexible batteries regardless of what cordless battery platform you're currently on. So that's what's sweet about this new Milwaukee M18 Fuel 10 inch miter saw is that you're getting more than what's available for 18 volts at the moment without having to switch over to a new higher voltage battery platform. So you don't need new batteries, you don't need a new charger, and you don't have to switch brands as the Milwaukee M18 18 volt batteries you already have on hand work perfectly fine on this miter saw, meaning there's no battery compatibility issues. So anyways, let's go over the specs of this new miter saw. And as its name implies, it's an M18 fuel miter saw. With fuel meaning it's a brushless power tool. So you get all the benefits of a brushless motor such as longer run times because it's more efficient, it runs cooler, and you also get a much longer lifespan with less maintenance because there's no brushes that need to be replaced. And in the case of newer brushless power tools, they're actually getting stronger and more powerful. I'm not an engineer and I'm not exactly sure how Milwaukee was able to make an 18 volt miter saw be able to pack enough punch to power a 10 inch blade. But I'm pretty sure it has mostly to do with their fuel brushes motor. Milwaukee has been able to do things lately that other manufacturers haven't been able to do with 18 volt power tools. For example, they made their extremely capable corded super hog into an 18 volt power tool. DeWall is also coming out with a cordless version of the whole hog as well, but theirs is going to be a 60 volt power tool. And Milwaukee took a tool that has never been made cordless before. I think you guys know which tool I'm talking about. And that's the SDS Max Rotary Hammer. And they made an 18 volt version out of it. So DeWall is also coming out with their own cordless version of the SDS Max Rotary Hammer as well. But theirs is also going to be on the 60 volt platform as well. Also in this year's Milwaukee 2016 New Tool Symposium, Milwaukee was at it again pushing the limits of 18 volts with a new string trimmer and blower running on the M18 system. But with the specifications you'd find on a higher voltage 56 volt power tool. So I think that by now you guys get the point, which is that Milwaukee is doing some sort of magic and wizardry with their 18 volt platform. And we definitely see that with today's power tool. I always thought that 18 volt power tools are holding back. And that's because I assumed that the current battery capacities were what was holding back the full power and potential of 18 volt power tools. And part of my suspicions were supported as all of these new super powerful 18 volt power tools are being pumped out to take advantage of the new Milwaukee M18 high demand 9 amp hour batteries. So up until recently, the highest capacity batteries for 18 volt have been 5 and 6 amp hour batteries. But the new Milwaukee high demand battery leapfrogs the current batteries with a whopping 9 amp hours. And this will no doubt be able to feed power hungry tools not only for longer run times, but so that more powerful 18 volt power tools can be created such as today's M18 fuel miter saw. So going back to the M18 fuel miter saw, you get full size corded miter saw capacities as it uses a 10 inch blade, has a large fence that allows for cutting up to five and three quarter inch molding. And you also get a large horizontal capacity that can cut up to two by 12 dimensional lumber. I did a bit of research on other 10 inch and 12 inch sliding miter saws. And as far as the fence goes, many saws max out around three to four inches for the maximum cutting height for trim. Very few saws reach 5 inches, and even less go beyond 6 inches. So this Milwaukee saw beats out most other corded 10 inch and 12 inch saws, as it has a very nice cutting height of 5 and 3 quarter inches for trim, 
vertically against the fence. And the same research I did showed that most 10 and 12 inch sliding miter saws have a maximum horizontal cut capacity for up to 2x12 lumber. Very few sliding miter saws go beyond 2x12. And it's nice to see that this Milwaukee miter saw also has a large cutting capacity that's on par with most full size miter saws out there. So you don't have to worry about getting less even though it's a cordless battery powered miter saw as it has full size cutting capacities that are as good or better than most 10 inch and even some 12 inch sliding miter saws out there. And just like all miter saws out there, it has all the popular angles built into the miter detent plate which take out all the guesswork of choosing popular angles. I also like how nice and smooth the base glides left to right to choose angles. I also like that Milwaukee went with a cam lock to lock the miter angles in place as it's very easy to use. You just push down here and it locks the angle into place and pull up to unlock it. This is way better than having those old twist knobs to tighten and to loosen. And here's something I haven't seen in a good while. Milwaukee also included the miter angle release lever below the cam lock and what's great about this is that it has that trigger feel to it which I think makes it much easier having this lever here rather than above it. And as far as miter angles go, you can go all the way to 50 degrees to the left side. And as a bonus, this saw can also go a full 60 degrees to the right side, just like the DeWalt Flexvolt DHS 790 that I recently reviewed. I like the 60 degree miter angle to the right because it makes a much more compact footprint, so it takes up much less space for storage. And it helps the saw fit easier through doorways because the back rails are out of the way. And after doing some research, I also found out that the 60 degree angles are great for getting that correct 60 degree angle for picnic table legs. If you do a quick search on YouTube for 60 degree miter angles, you'll see that it has a lot to do with making picnic table legs and because most miter saws max out at 45 to 50 degrees, others have had to make jigs to use regular miter saws just to get that additional 60 degree angle. So it's nice that you don't have to go out of your way with this saw if you need 60 degree angles and whatnot. Obviously this saw needs to be a sliding saw to be able to get that large horizontal cutting capacity. And all miter saws out there give you the ability to lock the rail so you can make this a chop saw if you're doing lots of repetitive cuts with shorter material. And they do this with a little knob on the back above the rails to lock it into place. So what's neat about this Milwaukee saw is that it has a nice slide lock in the front that can lock the back rails all the way back so that they don't slide. So the way it works is you slide this tab towards you and slide the rails all the way back to lock them into place. And this prevents them from moving forward. And to unlock it, you just push forward on the tab and it unlocks the rails so they can slide back and forth. So this feature is perfect for when you only need the saw as a chop saw. And by having this slide lock in the front makes it easy to reach and easy to set up so you don't have to reach all the way to the back of the saw to lock the back knob. Milwaukee also doesn't want you having to reach behind the saw at all and they give you a nice pull lever on the back of the saw that can easily be reached from in front of the saw to change the bevel angles. So all you do is pull on the lever all the way to change the bevel angle and because it's a dual bevel saw it can make bevel cuts to the left side and also all the way to the right side. And if that weren't awesome enough there's also some built in bevel detent as well for some of the popular bevel angles like 45 degrees and a couple of others. So to get to the bevel detents, you pull on the lever all the way to get near a bevel detent and then let go of the lever which close the lever halfway and just slide the saw into the desired bevel detent and then it will fall into place and hold the saw in that bevel detent angle. When it reaches a bevel detent, it doesn't click or pop or do anything. But you know you reach the detent when it stops you from moving the bevel angle. You then push down on the lever to fully lock it into place. So it's a very neat system that I've never seen before. And it sure beats having to reach behind the saw and turning those bevel lock knobs to tighten and loosen the armature. And getting 45 degree bevel angles is easy to do on other miter saws as they have built in 45 degree bevel stops. But you're pretty much on your own if you need other popular bevel angles. But this Milwaukee saw makes it easy with bevel angle detents which fall into place which pretty much takes out all the guesswork from bevel angles. So changing out bevel angles on this Milwaukee saw is the best I've seen on any miter saw that I've tried before. But one negative that I found, at least on the model that I have, is that the bevel pivot is a bit stiff to change bevel angles. You have to put moderate force to get the saw to bevel to either side. It's actually not that bad, but the problem is that it's stiff enough that when I try to change bevel angles, many times 
I end up lifting the saw instead of tilting the saw to the side if the saw is mounted on a tabletop, which can get a bit annoying. But if you mount the saw on a miter saw stand, it's still stiff, but not that big of a deal because the weight of the saw stand will prevent you from lifting the saw. Another negative that I found was that if you mount this saw on a miter saw stand, you'll have issues when doing 60 degree miter angles because the nuts that hold the mounting bolts will get in the way when you move the saw into the 60 degree position. You'll notice that in the back left as the armature of the saw banks into the nut here in the back. So when I get into the 60 degree angle, I'm pretty much screwed as it won't slide all the way to the back. So for now it's not really a big deal to me because I don't need to cut 60 degree angles but when I do this will pose to be a problem. But even then all I have to do is grind down the nut with bolt and all and make it fit. All in all it's not the worst problem I've encountered and it does have an easy fix but you'll need extra tools like a grinder, a metal cutoff wheel and a metal grinding wheel. The problem that I found was that the base of this saw is designed so that I use a hex bolt with the head of the bolt being here up top and it sinks down right here and the rest of the bolt goes through with the nut holding everything together where it connects to the miter saw stand. Now this is fine and dandy but it just wouldn't work with my miter saw stand. I have the rigid MS UV miter saw stand and it requires that the carriage bolts with the head go underneath the base onto the bracket with the nut being here up top of the base. You also get a very cool built-in light that's similar to the XPS LED light system found on DeWalt miter saws. And the way it works is as a bright LED light that shines light on the blade which creates a nice shadow on your workpiece and the shadow acts as a cut line indicator. The cool thing about this LED shadow cut line system is that it never needs to be calibrated, it never gets misaligned and even if you switch out blades it always shows the exact width of the blade whether it has a thinner or a larger curve. And you have two ways to activate the LED light shadow. With the first being an easy to reach switch located on the handle that lights up the light for about 10 seconds so you can line up the cut line. And the light also turns on when you press the trigger and start the motor. It works pretty much exactly the same way as a DeWalt system and also has the same drawbacks as it's a bit hard to see if you're outdoors and it's bright and sunny. And the shadow is clear the closer the blade is to the material as it tends to get out of focus the further the blade is from the material. As far as what's included with the saw, you get two extra side handles which also doubles as extensions and the screws to attach them onto the saw. You get the dust bag, the kickstand, the material clamp, and a blade. This saw is listed as only having one blade included, which is a 60 tooth blade. But on the one that I received, I got an extra second blade with 40 teeth. I got my saw from Milwaukee, so they probably included the extra blade as a bonus, so it's hard for me to say if you only get one blade or if you get two blades. Let us know in the comment section below if you guys only got one blade or if you did get two blades like I did. I got the saw as a bear tool so this is pretty much all I got and the price for the bear tool is $4.99. The price for the kit is $5.99 and it includes all of the above plus the Fabuloso M18 high demand battery with a whopping 9 amp hours of runtime capacity and you also get the rapid charger. Luckily I already had both of these on hand so I was set when I got this saw as a bear tool. Anyways. I also wanted to mention that this saw is about 95% ready to go out of the box. Really all the saw needs to get going is to install the blade but the additional stuff like the two side handles and the rear kickstand are to be installed. The kickstand goes here in the back and it helps the saw from tipping back when the blade rises up quickly. But I didn't install mine because I mounted mine on my miter saw stand. And the side handles offer nice wide grips and also act as extensions but also because I mounted this saw on the stand I didn't need the additional handles. So really the only thing you need to get going is to install the blade and I view the other stuff as optional. Although you'll probably want to install both if you don't plan on using this saw on the stand. Another neat thing I wanted to show you guys was the placement of the motor. The motor is placed vertically onto the saw facing down instead of running horizontally and it connects to the blade at a right angle using a neat little gearbox. It's sort of like the setup you'd find with an angle grinder or a worm dry circular saw, but probably closer to an angle grinder. So why does this matter? The answer is simple. Because if you place the motor right next to the blade horizontally, you run into the problem with low vertical cutting capacities because the motor gets in the way from being able to cut taller trim. If you look at all the budget miter saws, you'll notice that they have the motor running horizontally right next to the blade and they also have very short vertical cutting capacities. So the solution most saws have to end up with larger cutting height 
is that they place the motor further back behind the blade. This puts the motor out of the way and makes it so that the saw can cut much taller material. But because the motor is further back, it needs a belt to be able to drive the saw blade that several inches away. Belts are great and all, but eventually they wear out and at some point you'll need to replace the belt. So going back to this Milwaukee miter saw, because they place the motor vertically at a right angle right next to the blade using a mechanical gearbox, it allows the ability to cut tall boards without the need to place the motor further back and use belts that eventually wear out. I thought that was pretty interesting. We all know that miter saws have vacuum ports in the rear so you can connect a vac to them. I don't need to tell you guys that this saw has the same thing as it's pretty much a standard feature. But what I did want to show you guys is that the vacuum port on the back can take a standard two and a half inch hose and it also has a built in step down ring to support a regular one and a quarter inch hose so you can use either one without the need for adapters and such. I also checked out the blade alignment to see how good it was out of the box to see if it needed any adjustments and after checking it out with my square, I have to hand it to Milwaukee for doing a great job of setting up the saw at the factory as it was squared up spot on out of the box for both bevel and miter angles. The next thing I did was I set it up on my miter saw stand and take it to my backyard for testing so we can see what this saw is all about. Of course I wanted to go big and I went with a large 2x12 to give this saw a good challenge to test out its large horizontal cut capacity. And boy does this saw have some nice power. It plunged into the cut easily and made the large cut rather quickly. So my first impressions off the bat was that there is no way that this is an 18 volt power tool. I mean, I know it's an 18 volt power tool and I know I installed an 18 volt battery. But the way that this thing performs is definitely not like any 18 volt tool I've ever tested out. Next, let's see how the saw handles a 4x6 piece of lumber. So on the first cut, I made the cut by sliding the blade across the top of the 4x6 and this was pretty easy for the saw. I wanted to see if it can handle the 4x6 by making an up and down plunge cut and as we can see it has the power to do this but because the blade's not wide enough it can't finish the cut unless it slides across the 4x6. Nothing wrong with that but I just wanted to show you guys if it could be done or not. And here's one more cut just to show you guys that this cut is very easy with the slider. So as we can see from these cuts, I don't know what kind of magic or wizardry Milwaukee did with this saw but it somehow pushes beyond what 18 volt saws can do and I'd say it performs more like a 60 volt tool. I'd actually go on to say it has a performance close to corded saws. The speed is there for sure and the power is amazing for cordless. It's not exactly apples to apples performance with cord miter saws, but very close for most cuts as we can see. But because it is a battery powered saw, the performance does get pushed to the limits and the motor will slow down considerably on demanding cuts, such as this 45 degree bevel cut here. But as you can see, it still finishes the cut rather nicely for a battery powered saw. As I was saying earlier, these new power hungry tools, such as this new 10 inch miter saw, draw a lot of power to get them to do what they can do. And that's why they come with the new high demand 9.0 batteries, so they can not only get the job done, but get a good amount of work done before you need to recharge. And I know Milwaukee claims you can get up to 400 cuts per charge, but I believe that's with three and a quarter inch molding. Because this is a big full size miter saw with a large horizontal cut capacity that can cut up to two by 12. I figured that someone looking into buying this particular miter saw was probably gonna be cutting lots of large wide dimensional lumber. Otherwise they'd be going with a smaller miter saw or a model that didn't slide. So a good test for runtime would be to see how many cuts it can make into two by 10 lumber. And that's exactly what I did. I would make a set of 20 cuts and then let the saw rest for six minutes and then make another set of cuts until the batteries would run out. So after everything was said and done, this bad boy with the high demand 9.0 battery was able to make 123 cuts into two by 10 lumber. And that's a lot of cuts. And I know I've tested out saws before that have gotten way more than 123 cuts. But let me remind you that this saw made 123 cuts into two by 10 lumber, which is nearly the width of three two by fours laid side by side. So if I was cutting two by fours, I could have easily gotten nearly triple the amount of cuts. And what's interesting is that the runtime is not that far behind the runtime I got from the DeWalt Flexible 120 volt miter saw, which got a few more cuts at 151 cuts, but that was with two 60 volt batteries. So that's pretty impressive that this Milwaukee M18 fuel miter saw is not that far behind the 120 volt Flexible in terms of runtime, and it's only running on one battery. So overall, I'm very impressed at what Milwaukee has done with their first attempt at a cordless miter saw. It may be an 18 volt miter saw, but 
With the kind of performance that this thing has, I'd swear it was running on 60 volts. And its cutting speed is similar to that of a corded miter saw. But when this saw is pushed to its limit, you'll notice that it does fall behind corded miter saws. But it still does an excellent job for a cordless miter saw. And even though it's not running a 12 inch blade, this saw shows us that it doesn't have to. As it's got the cutting capacities of some of the best corded 10 inch and 12 inch miter saws out there. So I'd say that for most uses, this saw is all you really need. Unless you need to cut larger lumber like 2x14s or wider, or trim that 6 inches tall or taller. Oh, and one last thing before I wrap up this video. We all know that this saw was announced with the M18 high demand 9.0 battery, and that's the battery that it comes with if you buy it as a kit. But I was curious to see if it would also run on smaller capacity 18 volt batteries. So here's a saw running with an XE 4.0 battery, which is what many of you guys already have on hand if you're on the M18 system. And with that, we can see that it runs just fine with smaller capacity batteries as well. And some of you guys also have compact M18 batteries. So I tested it out with a compact 2.0 amp hour battery, and it also works just fine with the compact battery. This is great because let's say you have plenty of M18 batteries and all you guys have to go out and do is purchase one of these saws by itself to save a bit of catch. As the bear tool is $4.99. But I still think it's a pretty good deal to get the kit for $5.99 as it's only $100 more and you get the massive 9.0 battery. This battery by itself is worth $1.99 so it's a pretty good deal. And you also get the newer rapid charger that charges all Milwaukee batteries quicker. And not just M18 batteries but also the M12 batteries quicker as well. And as always, I left you guys links down in the description below if you guys are interested in purchasing one of these bad boys. So that's it for this episode of Tool Craze. As always, show your support for this channel by liking this video, checking out the Tool Craze website at www.toolcraze.net for more tool news, tool deals, and tool reviews you won't see here on this channel. And follow me over at social media, over at Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.